Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll answer the question, what is Wave's best tape plugin, the J37 or the Kramer tape? We'll look at each plugin's functionality, explain what certain features do, and then decide which one is the better plugin to pick if you could only pick one. Also, we'll listen to some real-time examples of the plugins, so stick around if you want a tape plugin, but you're not sure which one is right for you. But first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you have to do is create an account, upload the song, and we can do the rest. Now, when trying to find a great tape plugin, Waves Audio has been a go-to for a lot of engineers. They offer two affordably priced and widely used plugins, the J37 Tape Emulation and the Kramer Tape Emulation both of which have unique characteristics, functions, and nuances that make them better for certain genres, individual instruments, and as a means to achieve specific timbres. Now the J37 tape and the Kramer tape are currently on sale for $40 and $30 respectively, so it'll be interesting to see which one offers more for a roughly identical price point. Let's start off by looking at the functionality of the J37 tape emulation plugin. The J37 tape is an emulation of the Studer tape machines that were used in Abbey Road Studios in the mid to late 1960s. The machine was a four-track recorder, which was used most notably on the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Now starting from the left of the plugin, we notice three tape formulas, the 888, the 811, and the 815. The 888 is the most aggressive in its distortion, with the 811 and 815 progressively becoming less distorted. Use the 888 for more lo-fi projects and the 815 for a more subtle effect. The speed can be switched between 7.5 inches per second and 15 inches per second. 7.5 is better for a warmer sound with attenuated highs, whereas 15 is better suited for a cleaner, full spectrum sound. In the middle of the plugin are the input and output levels, which can be linked or controlled independently. Waves recommends that your signal peaks around 0 dB VU to get the best effect, so keep an eye on the meter below to achieve that. Biases to the right and ranges from 1.5 dB, 3 dB, and 5 dB, which is an ultrasonic frequency used to reduce tape hysteresis. When it comes to a plugin, this functionality will subtly increase your high frequencies and can lead to some distortion at higher levels. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have the model track section, which can be switched between the second, second plus third, and the third. Think of this kind of like a crossover effect in which the left and right channels bleed into one another. When you use the second plus third option, you'll create some mild phase cancellation, resulting in a wider stereo image. But if this effect is too aggressive, try either just the second or third option. Wow, rate, and depth control the amount of frequency modulation to the signal in conjunction with the tape speed. Depth will control the amount of modulation, and rate will control the frequency range of that modulation. Flutter is similar, but is the modulation of the overall amplitude of the signal. You can also increase noise and increase the amount of compression and harmonic distortion with the saturation rotary. Your meters can be switched between input and output and have a default calibration of 18 dB, but this can range from 8 dB to 24 dB by using the screw image underneath the meter. Last up, let's take a look at the delay section. The J37 allows you to control delay on the right and left channels independently or linked. The level of the delay is adjusted in dB, and the delay time is adjusted in milliseconds, or it can be synced to the host BPM. In the bottom right, the delay type can be altered between a slapback delay, feedback delay, and ping pong, which alternates the delay between the left and right channels. This can be further controlled with the high and low pass filters, which allows you to focus the delay into a more narrow band of frequencies. Insert and send switches are also available, which alternate the signal between being wet and dry with the insert option and completely wet or only the delay effect with the send return option. Now let's take a listen to the plugin on a stereo mix. I'm not the one 
Next, let's look at the functionality of the Kramer Tape Emulation plugin. From the start, we notice a big difference between the two plugins. The Kramer Tape is a lot simpler and less versatile. On the top left of the plugin is the tape speed, which can be switched between 7.5 and 15 inches per second. Bias ranges from 1.5 dB to plus 3 dB. The input and output can be linked or controlled independently. Drive the input and reduce the output to create some distortion, or keep the input more relaxed for a subtle effect. Flex is an interesting feature as it allows you to control how much of the signal is imparted onto the tape. Now, if we were to compare this to a feature on the J37, this would be a lot like the saturation rotary. Wow and flutter are controlled collectively with one dial, making this feature easier to use, but with less control. Noise can also be introduced to the signal. If you're not interested in using the majority of the plugin's features, or maybe you're trying to cut down on CPU, click the monitor button to turn off the tape speed, bias, flux, and wow flutter functions. Like the J37, Kramer tape can introduce delay, but with simpler controls. The delay type can be switched between slap and feedback, and the delay time is affected in milliseconds without the option to sync the time to your BPM. A low pass filter affects which frequencies will be delayed. Lastly, the meters can be switched between input and output and have their calibration altered. Let's take a listen to this plugin on a stereo mix and some stems. So our pick for the winner is the J37 tape. Although the Kramer tape is a great plugin that I've used and enjoyed on a lot of projects, the J37 offers a lot more flexibility. Granted, the Kramer tape is designed with mastering or bus compression and saturation in mind, whereas the J37 is designed more for creative effects, but you can still achieve a lot more with the J37. So, if you had to pick one of these plugins, I'd recommend the J37. However, since they're both affordably priced, you can most likely pick up both of them. Additionally, it's always a good idea to test the plugins yourself and then decide which one is best for your mixes and masters. They can both be demoed for seven days with full functionality. So, these are our thoughts on the J37 and Kramer Tape plugins, but what do you think? Do you prefer one of these over the other, or do you like them both for different reasons? let us know in the comment section below. 
Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up an account, upload the song, and we do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way, we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release three to four videos every week, and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.